In this video, we're going to be learning about cofunctions. So cofunctions in trigonometry are two ratios that work together. Sine and cosine are considered cofunctions, and we're going to investigate why. We could also think about this as think about the words sine and cosine. They are very similar. They both have sine in it, except one has the prefix co. So that makes them cofunctions. So we're going to use the diagram to find the value of each trig function. So if I look for sine of a, that's the opposite over the hypotenuse, I get 4 over 5. If I find cosine of b, that's the adjacent from b over the hypotenuse, and that also gives me 4 over 5. If I find sine of b, the opposite over the hypotenuse, 3 fifths, and cosine of a adjacent over hypotenuse, three-fifths as well. So notice what happens here. So the sine of a and cosine of b are equal to one another, and the sine of b and cosine of a are equal to one another. So the sine of one angle and the cosine of another are coming out to be equal when a and b have a certain relationship. So if we think here, it says, what term can you use to describe the relationship between angle a and angle b? Well, think about it. They're both the acute angles in a right triangle. And together, they must have a sum of 90 degrees in order for that whole triangle to have 180 degrees. So angle A and angle B, if they have a sum of 90 degrees, they are called complementary angles. So let's put this all together in a conclusion here. So the sine of an angle... is equal to the cosine of a complementary angle. Okay, so that's why sine of A and cosine of B come out to be equal, for instance. All right, to complete the next part, we need our calculator to be in degree mode. So you're going to need your calculator, so you're going to grab them. I'm going to grab mine as well. And um, to check, we're going to do one of two things. So if your calculator looks like mine here, you're going to hit the mode button just to the right of the second button. And if you look a couple rows down, you'll see the words radian and degree. You want to make sure degree is highlighted like mine is here. If you have a newer calculator at the top main screen, you're going to see a bunch of words here and degree should be one of them. Okay. So we don't actually need the calculator to answer the questions, but we're going to use the calculator to check our answers. So it says, use your conclusion to make each statement true. And then we're going to verify using our calculator that they're correct. So remember, the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of a complementary angle. So if I look at A here, what is a complementary angle to 20 degrees? Well, that would be 70 degrees because complementary angles add up to 90. If we want to check this in our calculator, you're going to type sine of 20 and hit enter. And you're going to type cosine of 70 and hit enter, and you're gonna make sure that these answers are equal to one another. So now we know we have the correct answer. All right, for B, the sine of 53 is equal to the cosine of what? So remember, the angles must be complementary to one another. So we have to think, okay, what number plus 53 would give us 90, and that would give us 37. Let's check sine of 53. Cosine of 37, and we get equal answers. Okay, so I'm not going to check all of these, but just realize you can check these on your calculator. All right, see the sine of 45 is equal to the cosine of 45. They happen to be equal because those are still complementary. D, the cosine of 16 is equal to the sine of what angle? This does not make a difference that cosine is now listed first. So we are going to do everything the same way. We're just going to figure out, well, what's the missing angle? That would add up to 90. So it's really like you're doing this, 90 minus 16, to get that missing answer. For e, cosine of 89 is equal to the sine of 1 degree. 
the cosine of 22. So if we are going to subtract 90 minus 22, we are going to get 68 degrees. For G, the sine of X equals the cosine of what? Well, think about what we know. Think about how even in the problem above here, didn't we do 90 minus 16 to get the 74? So we would just do 90 minus X. And since that has two terms, I'm just going to put that in parentheses. Similarly, if I have cosine of X equals sine of something, it's 90 minus X. And for the last one, I, it says the sine of A is equal to the cosine of blank. And it says if A and B are acute angles in a right triangle, well, then the sine of A is equal to cosine of B. And we saw that at, in our investigation at the top of the page. All right. On the uh, next page, we're going to look at some more sample questions here. Okay, so it says what value of X makes sine of X equals cosine of 49 true? Well, again, we need these numbers to add up to 90 degrees. So it's like we're doing 90 minus 49. And I'm going to get X is 41 degrees. Number two, what value of X makes cosine, excuse me, sine of 7 equal to cosine of X true? Well, we're doing 90 minus 7. So X comes out to be 83 degrees. Okay, so those really don't require much work. Now let's take a look at some that have some algebra involved. So it says if the sine of 4x equals cosine of 5x, solve for x. Well, these angles are complementary, right? That's the idea that the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of its complementary angle. So they mean that means that we must add up to 90. So I get 9x equals 90 and x equals 10. Okay, let's try another like that. This one says if the sine of 2x minus 4 is equal to cosine of 8x minus 2, find the measure of the smaller angle. Well, we have a little bit more algebra to do here, but we're going to start off this with the same concept that we have to add those angles up to 90. I'm going to combine like terms. And I'm going to this. I'm jumping a step here. That's going to give me 90 plus 6. So 10x is equal to 96 and x equals 9.6. So we want to find the measure of the smaller angle. So we're going to see which one's smaller. Now 2x minus 4 is probably going to be smaller than 8x minus 2, right? So we're going to figure out what that is. So what we're basically going to do is 2 times 9.6 and then we're going to subtract 4 from that. So 9.6 times 2 is going to give me 19.2. Minus 4 is going to give me 15.2 degrees. And that's definitely going to be the smaller angle. Let's say that you wanted a check and you weren't sure. Well, 8x is 8 times 9.6 minus 2. That would give me 76.8 minus 2 or 74.8, definitely not the smaller of the two angles. All right, number five. In triangle ABC, where C is a right angle, the sine of A is 3 fifths, what's cosine of B? Well, that means that A and B must be complementary angles. If C is the right angle, A and B must be complementary, and that means that the sine of A must be equal to the cosine of B, so cosine of B then must also be 3 over 5. No actual work to do there. If you wanted to draw a picture, you certainly could, but we've already established that sine of A is equal to cosine of B. All right, number six. Similar start, triangle ABC, angle C is 90 degrees. Solve for X if the sine of A is equal to 2X plus 0.6 and cosine of B equals 3X plus 0.5. Well, let's think about what we just said in the previous problem. The sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. That means 2x plus 0 0.6 is going to be equal to 3x plus 0 0.5. Okay, well, let's solve this. Let's get the x's together on one side. And let's move the numbers together, the constants together. 
and I get 0 0.1 is equal to x. Now you might have looked at this problem and you might have said to yourself, why are we not adding them up to 90? You might have thought about the problem above at number four and said, well, we added that up to 90. How come now we're setting them equal to each other? It depends what the problem gives you. In this problem, it's telling us what sine of A is equal to and what cosine of B is equal to. In number four, it's not telling us what they're equal to. It's giving us the algebraic expression where the angle should be. So the angles are what add up to 90, okay? But the sine and cosine are what are equal. All right, two more, just looking at some multiple choice practice. So which expression is always equivalent to sine of x when x is between 0 and 90? And that's going to be choice C, the cosine of 90 minus x, right? We're going to find the complement. And last, number eight, triangle ABC is shown. Which statement is always true for triangle ABC? Well, let's take a look. A and B are the complementary angles, so the sine of one is equal to the cosine of another. So sine of A is equal to cosine of B. We talked about that a few times today. That's just not an answer choice. But we could reverse it and say the cosine of A is equal to the sine of B. That is an answer choice. So our answer for 8 is B. Okay. Hopefully this helped you understand about co-functions. The next video in this playlist will talk about how to actually use SOHCAHTOA to find the lengths of missing sides in right triangles.